gonna switch over to 4K now because this is this place called Bray. <clears throat> On Monday, January 27th, after a pretty peaceful one and a half hour drive from Melbourne, we find ourselves on the small property near Biragura, surrounded by vegetable plots, sheds, orchards, and beehives to head into the restaurant building for lunch at this place called Bray. Chef Dan Hunter has had a ton of concepts in Australia that have basically come to a head with a concept like this, and I'm stoked to share an experience like this where all of the intentional details show themselves throughout the tasting menu. First to start, a glass of champagne, Pierre Peters Blanc de Blanc, quick cheers with the recently injured Hubert and my business partner Jade, who are both with me for this one. I made the request for some strategically timed glasses of white and red respectively when it made sense in the menu, but there is a full wine pairing option as well as a really well curated list if that's what you're feeling. First bite here is a potato skin filled with teardrop peas, zucchini seeds, and raspberries, and I hate to start off the menu in this way, but this dish fell way short for me. It was an over dehydrated potato skin. I thought it was hard to eat. I personally didn't think it was seasoned enough. The peas were definitely tasty, but because there was so much starchy skin in your mouth, any nuance that would have tied the elements together got lost. But the saving grace is that I promise this was the only bad bite of the entire meal. You'll have to see what I mean. On that note, enter prawn and kohlrabi, a taco style presentation of kohlrabi, spicy nasturtium, and a shatteringly unctuous prawn head. Pick it up to eat it and you're greeted with another dish underneath of broad beans, fresh asparagus, egg yolk, and fermented rye. Between the fresh and umami shellfish explosion that was that taco into the beautifully composed salad that screamed spring underneath, this brought me right back into this experience. Hubert still definitely talks about this dish. A wine from Andalusia, Spain next. This is a 2017 Palomino from Bodegas Cota 45. It had so many beautiful sherry characteristics. I really enjoyed this wine. Next up, barbecue pork jowl smoked even further at the last moments on the table with smoked eel. And when I say to you that this presentation made me stop and take a deep breath when it was in my mouth, I would be telling you the truth. This is some of the tastiest pork I've ever had. I love all cuts of the pig head and this was truly outstanding. Next to that, a really cool combo of steamed pumpkin with sea plants on a whole wheat croissant. Not exactly the most conventional combo, but it's really tricky to get flaky pastry to not dry out when it's served on this size. And I really love the tender pumpkin being like a stand-in for a sweet or creamy topping. Underneath that, we've got this, a beet that's been cooked overnight and then zhuzhed with the dehydrate and rehydrate in its own juice maneuver with abalone and an herb called whip stick wattle. Not an ingredient I've ever tasted before or really perceived because the beet and abalone combo was so tasty, but it's fun to say, so I'ma say it, whipstick waddle. Next up, a move I saw in Australia with french fries, but not executed at this level. This is a buttery disc of King Edward potato. It's almost tempura battered and fried until crispy. We were left to our own devices at the table with these healthy helpings of cultured cream and brook trout roe. This was really enjoyable. I think it's a reimagined presentation of a flavor combo. Many of us have seen a lot, but I've personally never eaten it quite like this before. Next up, a Dan Hunter signature move called Iced Oyster, where, yep, that is an ice cream inside of the oyster shell. With a powder made from sea lettuces dusted over the top, I cringed when I saw this because I thought it was going to be gimmicky, and I was quickly humbled on my first bite. I definitely wanted two more of these, and it wasn't even weird to have a semi-sweet dish at this point in the meal. Amazing execution. A stellar dark bake on this sourdough made from wheat grown on the property, believe it or not. They had harvested this just a week ago. Really bright and creamy herb puree and a scoop of cultured butter to go with it. As someone who likes my toast on the darker side, this hit all the right notes for me. Plus, they could have just served the green spread and I wouldn't have even missed the standard butter. Bray's version of the seasonal vegetable salad here, coming from their on-site vegetable gardens, I found this to be really herbaceous, more so than anything else. A lot of really sharp bitterness and leafy textures. Pretty beat forward on the vegetables underneath. It wasn't overdressed. I look at salads like this in a different way because I know how tedious it is to prep and plate them. Plus, you don't see them much outside of experiences like this, so I was super grateful to eat this course. Moving on on the wine side of things, Lotta Headwaters 2017 Nebbiolo. You'll see there isn't a big beef on this menu, so a lighter red was appreciated. And also it's more my preference serving that with this Berkshire pork in three cuts with zucchini, last summer's peppers, and hot sauce to garnish. I didn't get the most satisfaction from the rib piece, but that belly and loin cut stole the show for sure. An intermezzo of sorts here with red flowering eucalyptus ice cream, quandong, stewed with rhubarb, and mead. This is exactly what I was hoping for after a long drive outside the city a professionally curated presentation of product that 
I can't personally get at home. Plus it hit the spot after everything savory that we had just had. This is a honey and macadamia ice cream sandwich. It's probably better that you have to come all the way out to Bray to have one of these because if not, I would probably eat one every other day. A risky and mindfuck of a move with hot and cold chocolate lemon served inside of a half lemon here. It was bitter, but warm, light and fruity and sweet chocolate, tangy, but cold citrus. This was a standout of the year for sure. This blew my mind. Another Dan Hunter go-to combo here of parsnip and apple. It's served almost cannoli style. I'd been hearing about this for ages and it did not disappoint. Last up, a move I've been known to do myself on tasting menus, just a plate of seasonal berries served as they are to finish off any sweet cravings at the table. I did opt for an Americano at this point in the meal because we still had a very long day ahead of us. This meal did last three and a half hours, which for the nine presentations we were served only felt long because I needed to scurry back to Melbourne for the meetup that I hosted. Shout out to everyone that came out and continued to eat and drink with us. The total for the three of us came to $984 Aussie. I will let you do your own conversions if you're based elsewhere. The printed menu does get presented. Super grateful to have chefs Dan and Damien sign mine so I can hang it up back in the studio in Seattle. There's so much of this property I didn't even get to share in this video. As I said, a gorgeous and thoughtful destination with a true sense of place. Some of these journeys get a lot of hype, but I can truly say that this one was worth it. Stay tuned for two or three episodes from this Australia trip coming at your subscription feed soon. Until next time, thank you so much for your attention, and I hope you have a good one.